Nokia was a popular electronics company that was well known back in the day. It is still a known company, however, it is not as popular as it used to be. What has happened to the Nokia company? Welcome to the BizPage channel. In this video, we will be looking at how Nokia grew as a company, how it became popular and what has become of the company now. If you haven't already, then be sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel for more valuable content. Now without further ado, let's dive in. Let's start by looking at the history of Nokia to the point where it reached its peak. The Nokia Corporation is a multinational telecommunication, information technology and electronics company that is based in Finland. The company was founded back in the year of 1865. Nokia's headquarters is located just outside the Finnish capital, within the Greater Helsinki metropolitan area. Ever since its establishment, the company has operated in various industries over the course of around 150 years. Back when it was founded, it started as a pulp mill and had long been associated with the making of rubber and cables. Fast forward to the 1990s, the company has focused on large-scale telecommunications infrastructures, technology development and licensing. Within the mobile telephony industry, Nokia has been a large contributor. They have assisted in the development of the GSM, 3G and LTE standards. They were once the largest worldwide vendor of mobile phones and smartphones. The company was viewed with national pride by the people of Finland, as the business made it by far the largest worldwide company and brand from Finland. In the year of 2000, at its peak, during the telecoms bubble, Nokia alone accounted for 4% of the country's GDP, 21% of total exports and 70% of the Helsinki Stock Exchange market capital. When Nokia made its partnership with Microsoft and subsequent market struggles, its mobile phone business was bought by Microsoft, creating Microsoft Mobile as its successor in the year of 2014. After the transaction, Nokia focused more extensively on its telecommunications infrastructure business and on internet technologies. The company also carried out tests with virtual reality and digital health, the latter through the purchase of Withings the French electronics company. The brand of Nokia has since returned to the mobile and smartphone market. This was done through a licensing arrangement with HMD Global. Nokia continues to be an important licensor for most large mobile phone vendors. In the year of 2018, Nokia was the world's third largest network equipment manufacturer. Are you learning some good facts from this video? If you are, then be sure to leave a like on this video and visit the channel for more valuable content. What mistakes did Nokia make as a company which did not work for them? There were five main mistakes that Nokia made that did not help the company. The first mistake was having all hardware and no software. From the core, Nokia was a mobile manufacturing company that needed to be clever about its marketing strategies. Even within the early years of the company's startup, it was looked upon for its marketing tactics and users remembered Nokia as the company that was skilled at transforming phones into fashionable accessories. Nokia focused their attention to hardware and not enough to software. It is stated that software and apps were considered the backbone of powering up phones even back in the 2000s. This was something that Nokia underestimated. The second mistake was having lack of value proposition. If a business does not have effective value proposition, potential customers have little reason to buy your products or give you much notice. The iPhone was considered being a unique phone which linked well with other Apple devices while Samsung's Android smartphones were seen as highly versatile and user-friendly mobile devices, which still follow the same principle today. It was known that Nokia devices did not have the competitive edge unlike other mobile developers. They were behind in technology by creating phones with stunning cameras. However, this still did not work for them. Even if Nokia phones provided something that both iPhones and Android smartphones did not have, they were not able to obtain the right ideas. They had no value proposition and were unable to highlight this in their advert campaigns. The third mistake was not having an effective marketing voice. The marketing strategy that Nokia used seemed appropriate at the time of development and production. However, they had no direct message for their products and the techniques used were not targeted. It was the lack of consistency that put people off and that is what happened to Nokia. The company could not justify how their devices were better than others from different companies. 
Apple and Samsung did well in terms of having innovative features, apps and quality user experience. The fourth mistake was ignoring the changing markets. Nokia was behind to make devices that were for the US market. Following this, it did not go well with local carriers. In the year of 2009, Nokia was quite well known and dominated a good share of the market. The global mobile devices volume stood at 1.14 billion units. Even though the iPhone was still behind Nokia back then, it was still catching up quite quickly. iPhone was doing well, even though its share could hardly stand up to Nokia's 68 meters smartphones. The fifth mistake was sticking with Symbian. Symbian is a discontinued mobile operating system and computing platform designed for smartphone devices. The Symbian OS is Nokia's main property and they kept it for a long length of time. However, when the original iPhone was released in 2007, it highlighted many of the setbacks of Nokia's OS. It made Symbian look outdated and Nokia users were quick to see this. All in all, the Symbian engineers were not interested in making any changes and start offering some of the iPhone's OS features on the Nokia devices. Based off of the five mistakes that Nokia made, we can see how the company was impacted and how other companies were able to take advantage of this with other professional standards of marketing and technology. I hope you were able to learn something new within this video. If you did and you enjoyed it, then be sure to leave a like and comment below what you thought. Also be sure to share this video and subscribe to the BizPage channel for more valuable content that is coming. Thank you for watching.